Hi everyone, it's Peter from Turfman UK and welcome to what I hope will be the first in a series of interviews with prominent figures within the sports turf community. The first of those is Dave Mitchell. Dave is the head groundsman at Carlisle United Football Club and has been there for nearly 15 years. And in that time, he has consistently produced one of the best playing surfaces in the entire English Football League. I spoke to Dave the night after Carlisle had played Tranmere Rovers and I began by asking Dave whether his day had been busy. Yeah, 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 not bad. Well, no, well, not the busiest, but Wednesdays after a Tuesday night game are always a little bit um, laboured. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, Tuesdays yeah. are a long day. You know, you don't get home till 10 o'clock or past 10. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and could you literally do anything on the, on the pitch? Yeah, I've just filled a few holes in, filled filled some divots in. I'm just going for uh, what I normally do, Pete, is I do, um, you know, like a, a four inch. What's a goal for? Four inches or four and a half? Can't remember. Crikey, it's that long ago. Um, I, I wouldn't know off the top of my head. Okay, so I've got an old pot and golf for, and and I would get a, I'd get like, well, I've probably done a thousand so far this season where I will get them from the side of the pitch to fill a bare patch in, and yeah, then yeah. go and get some other turf. From out the back and then fill the bit beside the pitching. Yeah. Um, and I can take them from underneath the um, sky advertising. Right. You don't really know they're there. <laughs> um, so I've I probably, won't tell anybody I've, else. No, I've probably done a thousand this season and I'm just like, no, nah, it's just a yeah. waste of time now. You, you don't, you know, when you've got to choose between that one, that one, that one, and that one. And it's like, I could yeah. do, I could probably do 200 after each game now. So yeah, it's, yeah. it's just like, like and, and it's it's sand based construction the pitch isn't it yeah 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 so it's very it's very fragile yeah and that's why they're good because a you can hardly see them if you don't know they're there you can't see them yeah um and uh, obviously it's more, it's more solid it stays together yeah and it keeps everything a bit. It, it stops to get bigger. Let's say the whole yeah, 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 yeah. But it, but it's it's hard. It's difficult because the, the more you have to spike it, the looser it gets mm. because of the yeah. the water that's going to fall out of the sky. Uh, yeah. the, it's just a, maybe a matter of luck on a match day that it's going to book it down, and then um, you know you've got to spike it, and then and then it's like, well, I've just made it loose. So it's a it's a catch twenty two really. Do you take a chance yeah. and not do it? Um, and take a risk, or do you do it, and then you know you, you've got the aftermath of the, 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 it's a bit it's a bit loose. And I think that pro then pro cause, I think they they really rattle the roots around a bit, probably a bit too much, to be honest. Yeah, um, um, you, I think you've got to do it the right time of year more than anything. And do, well, you do, see, if I if I did it as a routine where you'd say right, I, I pro call the you know the pitch to three, four, five inches once a month, it's pointless if you don't need it. Yeah, because yeah. if the roots are there, the roots are there, and if they're not there, I don't know. You know, when you're talking about budgets, about root enhancers, yeah. it's not going to happen. So you just got to live with it. So yeah. uh, I, I work on a regime of I spike it if it's going to book it down, and it's going to be a borderline waterlog situation. But you're yeah. always, you're always thinking if you do it and, it, and they play it exactly like last night where they play. It buckets down. The pitch comes out in in a better condition than it could have been if you hadn't done it. it for yeah, example, yeah. it dries up faster. Yeah, yeah. Even though it's been wet today, you know it was okay. Hopefully, it dries up again tomorrow because I've got the weather, and then Friday I've got the weather, and then you go again on Saturday. Yeah, yeah. No, it's no good having it sort of sitting stagnant. No. For three, I mean, you, so yeah. in relation to the pitches, it's you you you've got your first team games. You've got. Right. There's no reserve team fixtures anymore, are there? Well, they are, but we've kind of... Well, I say we. It, ultimately, it's not really my decision, but I try and persuade them. We've got a, a fairly good relationship with Penrith. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where I'll go down, I'll, I'll do a little bit for them uh, and, and they'll take games as and when, whether it's... Yeah, yeah. Uh, bounce, call it, they call it bounce games. You know, they, they used to have a league... Uh, uh, you know what the other yeah, I remember I remember you know, yeah, you have a the league and that kind of thing, but yeah. uh it's funny, isn't it? You, I suppose in the years gone by, when you played a central league and you played another dozen home games on top of what you, your season mm. brought, it, it was almost like it was accepted because we know the pitch is going to be rubbish, so just get on with it. 
yeah. whereas now, yeah, 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 now yeah. the demand is to play on, I don't know, 90% grass all year round, yeah. at least. Um, but we'll still have 12 reserve games and it's, well, it's not going to work. Yeah. Yeah. It's not going to happen. It, on a, the, the difference with the sand construction is it's so hungry and it, 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 it yeah. struggles to recover. I yeah. can see that with just, um, you know, when you go on a soil-based pitch, which has got soil and there's far more in it to recover. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and when it does get a chance, it, do, it just does recover. Yeah, I think uh, but Yeah, I think that's like, we found that on sort of lift and fill greens uh, yeah. and on bowling greens where the, the construction is uh, variable at best. Um it's a, they're a lot cheaper to maintain. Uh-huh. It's it, it, it sort of like you're not certainly you're not firing fertilizer, on, you know, sort of through the, through whatever playing season you've got to try and sort of, and it will be sort of like for rugby and football, I suppose, because of the volume of wear that you're getting on those. Because um, I was funny last night, I was watching the highlights of the game against Tranmere. I just flicked on to just basically to have a look because you you know the pitch was performing. And uh, it, 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 I know you're your own worst critic in that you're always looking for perfection. Um, but I did notice one or two of the players when they scored was sliding on the pitch, and I thought, no, right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, know, oh, oh, yeah, unnecessary wear. And it's you know, the volume of wear that a pitch gets on top of um, playing on a Saturday or whatever day the first team's playing, you know, yeah. not less contributes to what you can physically do on the pitch. And also, sort of how it repairs itself through um, just natural repair, and if you add on to the top, top of that, sort of weather conditions as well. So those those finite windows that you've got to certainly do your job and maintain the pitch to the best of its possible standard, which you've maintained for. So you've been at United since two thousand and four, haven't you? Five two thousand April two thousand five. Five, yeah. Yeah. Do you know why you know that? Uh, I don't. Right. Well, me and you were the last. We, we we got the interviews for the job. Oh, beat, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. You right, you yeah, beat yeah. me to it. Right. And I'll, I'll I'll say on record they made the right decision. <laughs> what about there was the, who was I can't remember the lad. He, he used to do a little bit at the rugby club next door, but he worked at Cockermouth. Yeah. Um, oh. oh. Yeah, I can remember. I know exactly who you mean, but um, was it Forbes? I don't know what his name is. Yeah, that rings a bell. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I used to see him at the rugby club next door, but I haven't seen him for a long time. I haven't seen him for a long time. I don't know where no, he went. No. He was a Leeds fan. Oh, was he? Yeah, that sounds about it. That's him. Yeah. Yeah, he, he right. Is. Yeah. Although right. he takes his son to City now, I think. Right, okay. You must have so, been, yeah, your hands yeah. must have been too clean. Your hands must have been too clean. <laughs> well, it's funny. You know, I, looked at, I remember looking out over the pitch because there was, you remember, the, I had my interview in a porter cabin behind the back of the waterworks end. Yeah, yeah. And I remember looking, they played, uh, it was over Easter and they played um, Forest Green. Uh-huh. And they got beat 1 0. And yeah. um, I, I remember looking over the pitch after it on, on the Monday or Tuesday when I'd gone for the interview. And it was basically, it, look, it just looked like being out at sea. Yeah. It just, there wasn't a flat bit on it. You know, it just been puddled up and ruined. And I, I actually thought, crikey, whoever takes this on has got a yeah. major, major job. Yeah. It's funny because obviously as a fan, you'd stand in the paddock and look at it week in, week out, week in, week out. Mm. You know, uh, it, it, the warm-ups weren't that bad in those days, I don't think. Um, no. But, but you you know, the game would start and the big divots would appear and <laughs> nobody would do anything at, at half-time. No, no, yeah, yeah. You was yeah. just dying to walk out and just, just flatten a few and do this, this yeah. and this. And eventually, I don't know when it would be, Pete, it must have been in the 90s maybe. You know when it was really down in the dumps and mm, yeah. well, 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 pre night, pre night, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, they played rugby on it as well for a while. Yeah, in the eighties, yeah. Eighties, yeah. So yeah, I kind of, I kind of approached. I can't remember how I did it now, but I, I approached and sort of said, "Look, I, I'll come down. You know, I, I'm going to the match anyway. If you get us a fork." I'll just <laughs> I'll come on yeah. half time and do I'll do yeah. it after the game for you. So I started doing that. And there was sometimes when I was the only I was the only person on the pitch, and yeah. I was like, well, yeah. where, where's, it, yeah. "Where's the rest of the mat?" And, and you're like, "Well, it's not going to happen with that attitude." So mm. there was that, and then it got to the stage where so that's through the '90s, and then you're the, into the the, the, the 2000s. Um, 
and then what? Well, obviously, then the job came up. The job came up, and it was like, yeah, I wouldn't mind to go at that because it's rubbish. Yeah. So what was your what was your path? Did, were you always in amenity horticulture? Were you yeah, I, well, I, I, I did. I did. I did A levels at school, um, geography and chemistry, which I, I didn't pass. I probably got a D or something. I don't know whether that's a pass or not. Yeah, yeah. But it took it. It took it. It took both subjects a bit, a bit further on. I always liked physical geography, not economics. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, we used to do. I always, I always say this. We used to do a thing in, in economic geography of. So this would be back in. 80, 83, say, yeah. where well, find out find out where the cutoff point is for people where they shop between Carlisle and Penrith, <laughs> and we we worked it out. That it was a, <laughs> well, there isn't anything between. Well, it was a village called Plumpton. <laughs> so, like, so if you live in Plumpton, you're probably yeah. going with. But of course, there was no Morrison's in those days. There was no. You, do, do you see what I mean? And yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I found that I found that terribly boring. Terribly boring. However, we used to do stuff like, you know, if Carlisle was going to have a, a hypermarket, as it was called at the time, where would you put it? And it's kind of like not where Tesco's is now, but close. You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So little yeah. things like that where you go, now you it should be over there, not there. For traffic yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So, so there was that. Uh, but the physical side I always liked. So, soil profiles, glaciation. Yeah, yeah. M- mountains, lakes, rivers. Um, that kind of stuff. I've always liked that maps. Yeah. Uh, um, so I left school and I worked for my dad in his accountancy firm for a couple of years till I was. All right. Okay. I'll have been heading for nineteen twenty. Yeah. And, um, I can't remember. I think we must have had a careers night at school, probably in in, in the sixth form, and um, I don't know how it happened, but I came across. Myerscope College, where yeah, yeah. they offered, I think at the time it was called Turf Culture, a three-year diploma in Turf Culture. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, this sounds a bit sort of, this sounds too much, you know, it's too complicated, it's too scientific. And I kind of looked at the syllabus and thought, yeah, maybe oh, I wouldn't mind having a go at that. Um, but in those days, you needed a year's work experience in, in, a, in, a, in a golf course, a football, yeah. cricket, all that kind of stuff. So um, that triggered me to look for a, a place of employment. So golf clubs, uh, you know, horticultural places, nurseries, uh, the council, parks and gardens, that kind of stuff. And yeah. fortunately, Bramp- Brampton Golf Club took me on for no pay um, initially um, on, a, on a year to, to get experience. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, as luck would have it, while I was there for a year, maybe... I don't know, maybe after nine months, there was two jobs came up. So I thought, I like the work. I'll, 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 yeah. I'll apply for the job. Got the job as assistant greenkeeper. Um, and then that and then that got me going on on the ladder there, really. Um, and that, so you did, did you do a year before you started in education? Now, were you doing, uh, did they run concurrently to start with or? Yeah, well, uh, uh, for, when you look back, Bram- Brampton Golf Club were really good because they, they, they sent us all to Newton Rig, and then and then yeah, after yeah, that, yeah. They might score to get to get what you would call qualified, I suppose, or at least yeah. you know get more experience and that. But it, back in those days, Pete, you remember when when you went to Newton Rig, we did I can't remember quite remember, but you did phase one, phase two, phase three. Phase one was basic. Yeah, know, that's right. Yeah, a bit of turf, half half moon it and square and lift it. <laughs> but you'd be amazed how many people. I mean, you know, they don't have a clue what you're doing. You know, when you no, help, that... work with a work experience, it's like, oh, crikey, me help. But that's another that's yeah. another subject matter, isn't it? Yeah, so, yeah. so you do the basics you in your first one, but this was only block release. You were only doing a week at a time. Yeah, maybe over six weeks in a, in an academic year. Yeah, and then um, you go on to phase two, but I can remember phase three had a an amenity option or a dec- decorative horticulture option, and there wasn't yeah, enough yeah. people. There wasn't enough people to do the amenity one to, right. to make it feasible. So yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I had to go back to the golf club and say, "Look, I'd, 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 just to keep it rolling, I'll, I'll do. I don't mind doing this one." So that gave me a bit more of um, I don't know. We used to go visiting 
uh, gardens and uh, you know yeah, yeah. propagating yeah. plants and cutting yeah, yeah. And, and, and so overall it all it all dovetailed in to yeah, yeah. so you can still pull on those little bits and pieces there. Yeah. I mean, that, that's literally what you're saying is what, exactly what happened with me. Yeah, it yeah. was just uh, you got you got put in the course that best fit you because there wasn't a job specific course that we could do. And so I sort of got later on in my education, and uh, I think I started in amenity horticulture in eighty seven, pretty much straight from school. Yeah. And there was an amenity. There was a I think they were called MVQs. Still, probably, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I'll go for that, but I think I think mine was City, City and Guilds or something a bit before that, yeah, yeah. But anyway, it was the same principle where you just got to put on a, a general amenity horticulture course that covered literally everything, it was like a one stop shop, yeah. And then, uh, 10 years later, when I went back, they they had my school had got more involved with Newton Rigg yeah. and they would they create job specific courses which really were, were at the top end were tailored for. Head groundsman, greenkeepers, what what have you? Yeah. So you, how long were you at um, at Brampton for? So so Brampton would be uh, 80, 86 for thirteen years. All oh, right. So a good a good a good period of time. Well, I when it was, so I joined, and then I went to. Um, so I, well, I got up to sort of deputy head at Brampton. So you were sort of you had a bit of a little bit of governance when you know. Uh, when the boss man wasn't there, uh, yeah. but not, you know, yeah. not like flaunting. What no, 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 no. Shouldn't have been doing kind of thing. You know what I mean? I mean, a lot of people. Yeah, no, I, I, I a lot of people used to say the course. The course was for the for those two weeks in the summer. The course was at its best, kind of thing. But <laughs> everybody, everybody pulled the weight, kind of thing. You know, when you were yeah, 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 yeah. man down, kind of thing. It was good. It was. It, 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 I've always said Brampton should be, you know. Boot and Silver up at the backside in terms of its stature in the county is a golf club. Mm, oh, yeah, yeah, great, great location. Um, yeah. Uh, so there, so yeah, but I, and then I went to Eden Golf Club, which had been I don't know, I can't remember when Eden was built, just at, at Crosby, just outside Carlisle. Yeah, yeah, in Carlisle and Brampton. Um, so that was at the turn of the at the turn of the millennium. Yeah. So I just kind of started that. So it was a fresh start um, as head greenkeeper there, and then I was there for five years. Um, not the best construction, but it had been through phases of, you know, yeah. like the ownership had been sold and moved yeah. on, and, and then and then the family family had bought kind of bought well, not bought it back, but re, you know bought it on on the land that they'd already sold. Yeah, yeah. And um, it had got moving forward. It was starting to get established. You know, the trees were growing, and we were getting a bit of shape in the fairways. The greens were improving. Um, we just kind of kept that rolling really for five years. Um, Long, long hours though, because there was only four of us. Right, yeah, it's a grass factory. It, it, and it, a drive, yeah, and a driving range. Um, and then at the time when uh, the job came up in about well, that well, I don't know, been February, March, or five, post, I don't know what the storm was called in, or five, Pete. Um, yeah, I'll have, to, I'll have to look that one. I don't think I don't think they maybe even named them then. Um, yeah. So no, that's, yeah, I think you're right. I don't think they did name them back yeah, then. Yeah. So we had so obviously the golf course was flooded. We had a big clear up operation, and then there was the job at Carla, which of course had been Carla United, which had been flooded. Mm. So it was all the frying pan in the fire, really. It uh, was, yeah. So uh, what were your what were your first imp- what were your first impressions when you went there with sort of staffing levels, machinery, budget? Was it sort of something that you were, you were going to have to sort of, you you were comfortable with, or was it something that you thought uh, you were going to have to look at different contingencies? Uh, yeah, you were sort of like right. Well, I'm not going to go. Kicking somebody's door down on day one, saying, you know, what's, <laughs> what's all that load of yeah, rubbish? Yeah, yeah. Because, because as a fan, you can actually see that, well, whatever they've got in the shed can produce something August, September, October. But then after yeah, November, yeah, September, yeah. January, February, March, there's, there's a struggle on. And the key and the key there is either overuse or drainage or both mm. in terms of the stadium pitch. So you're thinking, right, well, how, how can we address this? Yeah. And um, But the, the, the biggest issue with the pitch in April 05 was that it was it had been just been covered in I don't I don't know eight ten twelve feet of water water yeah. um and had an absolutely this disgusting layer of I call it chocolate icing because we've had it twice <laughs> yeah 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 it just gets, well you know with the bowling green and yeah yeah etc et where you just get this horrible layer of silt you probably mm. get more stones in it and rocks 
but um, it's like that's that's basically sealing the surface. Yeah. So, and not only that, whenever you could walk on it and it just went brown. Where you, where well, yeah, you, yeah, same with the yeah, same with those aren't you? you know. So then you put a match on it. Well, the grass just goes brown. So the irony, the irony is that um, you're dying for it to rain to wash it clean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> after yeah. all that. Yeah, after all that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think you know, in hindsight, with the lack of, with all respect to everybody that was there at the time and, and the money that was available, um, nothing was done for the rest of that season and, and the following season, apart from, I think we put a five metre drainage system in across the pitch. Um, right. Which we kind of thought, yeah, well, it might help, but we're still living with the, with the silt. Yeah. Before, just before I got there, the lads had, um, you know, when you get silty mud becomes a certain consistency, you put a roller on a track behind a tractor. Yeah. And it just kind of sticks to the roller. Yeah. It's a bit like worm casts. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they did that all over the pitch, and they would just have to scrape the roller. They'd go across, scrape the roller, turn around, go back across, scrape the roller, go back, oh, and, they, and they did that. Just with the idea of picking it up? Yeah, picking it up, getting it off. Yeah. So they yeah. got a bit off, but like I say, and sure enough, the first game back after the flood was, um, I think it was against Dagenham, uh, mm. and it was a 2-2 draw, and lo and behold, it bucketed down. And it was <laughs> like, oh, my God. Look at the state of that. So um, we finished that season. We put the drainage system in in in, in five uh, oh five uh, oh five six. Yeah. Um, and the pitch got absolutely hammered that following season. First season back in. Um, did you have a concert on it? No. Oh God. Yeah, we did, Pete. Uh, but that was um, that was Elton John, and that was the first season after the new pitch. Right. So. But, so just going back, 05-06 was the last season on the old pitch, which was just, I mean, I could I could look in the file. It's just game after game. I remember one week we had a home game Saturday. We had a home game Tuesday. And we had a reserve game against Shrewsbury on the Wednesday, the following day. Joe Hart was in goal for Shrewsbury that day. That's how I can remember it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With this... I, he's going to be good, this goalie, and blah, blah, blah. And he made like 15 great saves in a 2 2 yeah. or something. And then we had another game on the Saturday, I think, or at least, or maybe the following Tuesday. And me, myself, and uh, a board member went into the stand and looked at it well, while the Shrewsbury Reserve game was getting played. And um, he said something like, let's not look at it for too long. Come on, we'll go and have a chat. And I think, and then we eventually got the ball rolling on a, you know, and of course, Fred Story was there with a bit of vision and a bit of clout. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, you know, we, we had a bit of a chat, pulled in uh, PSD. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the agronomists on a, you know, on a new pitch design and build and well, not design, but you know what I mean? Uh, you know, yeah. the construction, construction. Yeah. which I knew very little about. I will admit, I didn't know much about fibre sand pitch. Uh, but, you know, since the early 90s with the um, Premier League and stuff. Pitches mm-hmm. gone from basic root zone pitches, which kind of flew apart. Yeah. And then the fibre sand off of the race courses became mm-hmm. an idea. Um, and, and, they, and they took off. And then they took yeah. off. But of course, by the time Carlisle had a fibre sand pitch, everybody else had moved on to a, a Deso, you know, a stick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. However, going to fibre sand was like a million miles ahead of where yeah. it was. Yeah. So in terms of... Be you know I'm lucky that 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 happened when I was there really. Um, mm. But deep down, when you look when you look back at you know you said before Pete about you know why did why did you want to go and do it? It was because it was rubbish and you thought you could make it better. Better, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so then but then you get a new pitch, sprinklers, all the rest of it, blah blah blah. Uh, you know, drains like mad first year, absolutely pile of yeah. water to keep it alive. Right, you know, yeah, yeah. On warm days, yeah, and. Um, you know, you get to the end of that season, you said before, then we have Elton John, the agronomists come in, everybody looks at the pitch and goes, for oh, crikey me, Dave, you don't need to do much with that because it's perfect. Yeah. And I kind of reluctantly went with it and said, mm, right, okay, we'll do, yeah. we'll give it a rake and a bit of a scarify and go again. Well, next season, disaster. Yeah. So that kind of, and there you are, it's part of a learning learning curve where yeah, yeah, yeah. Saying, right, you can't you can't do nothing at the end of any season. It doesn't matter how good it is. 
Absolutely not. I mean, you learn from you learn from your mistakes, don't you? That's yeah, the thing. definitely, definitely. And then there's yeah. Rookwood Havoc the following season. The weather's terrible. It's game after game after game. Um, and I'm trying to think where we were league wise. Um, so we played. Neil McDonald was manager, so top end, top end of League One, top end of League One. Yeah, and then so it's like yeah, top end of League One, and it's we're doing okay, and oh, where's the grass disappearing to, and all the rest of it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, but it's 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 a six and two three situation where if if as the home team you know you're going to play on something that's a bit iffy, I would suggest mm. it's a bit of an advantage to a team that might come and go. Oh yeah, Carlos pitch, it's always good. Oh, hang on a minute, no, it isn't. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, so, you, it's like the old baseball ground at Derby County. It, it, it eventually became, you know, Clough had it like that for a reason because yeah. nobody else could play on it by his own team. So I completely we, get this whole field to, advantage. Yeah, yeah, you used to tell the groundsman to block the stop, put the put the stop, stop it yeah. on, on a Friday and flood it. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there you are. But yeah, as one manager said to me, and I won't name him, um, if you can't cheat at home, where can you cheat? <laughs> <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed that uh, first part of our chat with Dave. Uh, just to let you know that there will be a, another couple of um, videos that we'll be uploading in the next week or so uh, that will deal specifically with Dave's time at uh, Carlo United, particularly the winter of um, 2010 where we had a particularly cold patch and uh, Dave managed to get games on throughout that period and also the uh, period of 2015 after Storm Desmond when United decided that they were going to relay their pitch. So we'll chat to Dave about how he managed to do that. So that's all to come in the next week or so. But thanks for watching this video. Uh, if you've uh, enjoyed it, please leave a like um, and subscribe to the channel as well. That would be great. And if you have any comments, please leave them in the comments below. Until next time, thanks again for watching and we'll see you again soon.